Good morning to everyone. Folks, my name is Paul Lane Jr. I am one of the funeral directors from the Paul Lane Funeral Home. On behalf of the members of Trustee Garrett, I do wish to thank everyone for their attendance here with the family on this day. We are awaiting the arrival of Pastor Hall for the beginning of the homegoing celebration for Trustee Garrett. The beginning of the actual homegoing celebration is known as the processional. What that means, uh, family members, you will enter the sanctuary following Pastor Hall uh, following the deacons, the deaconesses, and also the trustees who are present. Once I do know that Pastor Hall has arrived, I will return to this podium, and at that time I'm going to ask all family members for you to please assemble in the vestibule. Um, once again, I see we have one of our deacons, we have deaconesses and trustees, uh, so I want each of um, you folks to also uh, line up in the back of the church that we may do the processional in proper fashion. I am going to ask a favor. Um, anyone who does happen to have a cell phone, if you're not using your cell phone um, to tune into the live stream, um, at this point, would you please place your cell phones on vibrate? Once we begin the order of service, we would prefer not to have interruptions of cell phones. As we are awaiting the arrival of Pastor Hall, um, if there's anyone other than, other than um, Sister Roberta Butler, the daughter, is designated to speak during the actual funeral service, if there's anyone else who wishes to share remarks with the family at this time. Please come to this podium. This will be your time to share your reflections or your expressions of sympathy with the family. Anyone who wishes to do so, feel free to come to the podium at this time. Thank you. I will return to this podium once we know that Pastor Hall has arrived here at the church. Thank you.
Hello again, good morning to everyone. We are now going to make the preparations for the beginning of the homegoing celebration for Trustee Garrett. At this point, family members, I'm going to ask all family members who are able to, please make your way to the vestibule of the church. Um, I see we have one of our deacons. Deacon, deaconesses who are able to, and trustees, please also make your way to the rear of the church. Thank you. Neither slumbers nor sleeps. Therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed. mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar, And be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river.
streams whereof shall make glad. The city of our God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. that right early. The heathen rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. earth met, melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob. Is our refuge. God bless you. You may be seated. Good morning, saints. Good morning, Calvary family. Good morning, Garrett family. And others who may be gathered with us today. It's a rainy day. Since I was a little boy, I always believed that it rains when the saints go marching in. I, I don't know why. I have since learned that other people were possessed of such a notion. Where we get that from, I don't know. But Brother Barnes, if you're around when I go and it don't rain, get the deacons, get some buckets of water, go up on the roof, when the people come out, just pour it and just douse them with it. Amen. 
I think I think it rains when the Saints go marching in because I remember December 1968. I was nine years old. And my grandfather passed away. At that time, he passed it in Denison, Texas, 60 miles north of Dallas. Its only claim was that it was the birthplace of Dwight Eisenhower. There was a little church there called Mount Zion. He passed it. We drove from Dallas to Denison in the rain. Perhaps that's where I got the notion. The most sainted person I ever met was my grandmother, Portia Modesta English Figures. I was just stunned that it did not rain when she went to see the Lord. I couldn't believe it. We stood outside the church on a bright, sunshiny day. They didn't have a vestibule like this. You just walked off the step into the church so the whole family was outside and right about 10.50, about 10 minutes before the funeral was to start, a deluge of rain just came out of nowhere. I've always believed that it rains when the saints go marching in. And today we have another brother the sweetest soul a man could have. Gentle, loving, kind, gracious. It's a hard day. For many, it's a sad day, but it's not a sad day when saints go home to be with the Lord. It's sad for us because we're going to miss them. And it's hard to let go. But today is a good and rainy day. When the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching when they crown him Lord of all, oh, when they crown him Lord of all, oh, when they crown him Lord of all, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When they crown him, Lord. Oh, when they crown him, King of Kings. Oh, when they crown him, King of Kings. Oh, Lord, I want be in that number. Oh, when they crown him king, king. Our program will proceed as printed with one addition after the remarks by Roberta Butler. We will have the resolutions, one on behalf of the trustees to be read by Trustee Tara Brooks Smith and the other on behalf of our church family to be read by our acting church clerk in the absence of Sylvia Moon Poole, Sister Celeste Laverne Morgan Glenn. Are Michael and Jordan present? If you will join us on the front row, as well as you, Sister Media, amen. Our congregational hymn is When Peace Like a River. Well, that's not the congregational hymn. Who did this program? The name of the hymn is It Is Well With My Soul. I don't know who wrote down When Peace. That's the first line. We're going to sing It Is Well With My Soul. That's our congregational hymn. 
All right, come on. I'm sorry, family, you remain seated. Everybody else stand up. Amen. Y'all members of the family? Huh? No, I'm talking about them back there. Y'all members of the family? Oh, okay, well, y'all remain seated. All right, don't be fooling me now. Everybody else stand up. Get your exercise. Come on, it is well. sing a hymn. We're here to celebrate a homegoing. Amen. Amen. Our brother rests from his labors. Amen. So we're going to try to chorus over again. Women, I want you to lead us. I want the women to say, it is well. And then I need the men to come in and back them up and say, it is well. You know, all right, you know how we're going to do it? We're going to do the chorus. Women, you're going to say it is well. And then the brothers, we're going to blow them out. You know what I'm saying? Huh? You know what? Sit down. Everybody sit down. Let's sit down. I want all the brothers in the house to stand up. Come on, brothers. All the brothers, all the wannabe brothers, stand up. All right. Now, brothers, if we don't get our part right, you're not going to embarrass me. We're going to do it over. All right, come on, come on, let's try. The women gonna start out and then we come in behind. Come on, brothers, let's show them. for that. I need an A plus in the house today. All right. All right. So ladies, you will lead us as you always do. But brothers, we're going to come back and show them how it's done. All right. We ready? Let's go. It is 
Thank you, brothers. We showed these women how to sing a hymn in the house today. Come on, brothers. Amen. Michael and then Jordan and then Media. Yes. Good morning. Uh, I'm Michael Garrett Jr. I'm uh, the grandson of uh, Thomas Garrett, the late Thomas Garrett. Uh, I'm going to be reading the 27th Psalm from the Old Testament. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, and my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up upon mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing ye. I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When thou sad, seek ye my face, my heart sent unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me in such as breath of cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the, good, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say unto the Lord, wait. Thank you. Good morning, family. Good morning. I am Jordan Garrett, son of Michael Garrett, senior and grandson of the late Thomas James Garrett. I love my granddad very much, and I will miss him very much. I'll be reading in John 14 from the, from the New Testament, verses 1 to 7. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye be may, there may be also. And whither I go, ye you know, and the way ye you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? 
Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye also have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Good morning, Calvary. Family of Deacon, not Deacon, I'm sorry. Family of Trustee Thomas Garrett. Um, my name is Media Oliver. I'm the acting chair of the trustee board. And I just want to say that as you grieve, you're going to have moments of remembrance, as I just did with the song, It Is Well With My Soul. I lost my mother five years ago, but things like songs, memories, moments will trigger happiness, joy, sometimes confusion, regrets. So now I'm praying for you this prayer of comfort, to comfort you as he's not with us anymore, but he's with us in spirit. So bow your heads. Father God, we thank you for this day and every day. We thank you that you are a God who is above all other gods and that you loved us enough to send your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, Father God. Lord God. Father God, on this day of mourning, on this day of this homegoing service, we thank you for our brother, Thomas James Garrett. Lord, he was a brother, he was a father, he was a grandfather, an uncle, a cousin, and a friend. Father God, I pray for the Garrett family as they mourn and grieve his passing. I pray that they will find comfort in knowing that he has gone to his eternal home, that Jesus Christ prepared for him in heaven. Father God, give them peace, joy, and hope, because according to your word, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Give them victory over negative thoughts, feelings, or regrets, Father God. I pray that they will call on the mighty name of Jesus to order their steps according to your word and to make your word a lamp unto their path. Father God, as they take time to mourn and grieve, I pray that they will be encouraged to do what David did as he grieved. He gave glory and honor to you. He continued to worship, praise, and thank you. So family, continue to worship, praise, and thank God for your blessings and the love of your father, friend, uncle, grandfather. May God bless and keep you now and forevermore. And may God bless us all as we look forward to that day when we will all meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers. You may be seated. Thank you, Sister Media. God bless you. We, <coughs> excuse me. We would like to ask if Sister Roberta and Sister Celeste, Tara Brooks Smith, and Trustee Don Adams, if you will come to share on the front pew. We are blessed today. We are blessed whenever she comes have with us our baby, our girl, Kim Summerson. She's going to come today with a selection after which Sister Roberta will have special remarks. Sister Tara Brooks Smith and Celeste Morgan Glenn will read resolutions and Trustee Don Adams will read the obituary after which Sister Kim will return. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Oh, things so undeserved. Yet you came to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels 
cannot express my gratitude. Yes, Lord. Oh, that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to thee. I'm going to sing that again. How can I give thanks for all the things you have done for me? All oh, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. And the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. Oh, that I am and never hope to be, I owe it all. To thee. So I say to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God. Thank you all for being here with us today to celebrate the life and the legacy of Thomas T.J. Garrett and the entire Garrett family. I am Roberta Butler. I am the youngest of T.J.'s uh, kids. Um, as you can tell, many of you have said I look a lot like him. Garrett jeans are strong. You can pick us out in the crowd anywhere. Um, <clears throat> On behalf, on my dad's behalf, I would like to extend our gratitude. Please know that I did my best to capture individuals and groups, and if I missed anyone, please charge it to my head and not my heart. The impact you had on my dad uh, should not be diminished if I failed to mention you, and I appreciate your grace. To the Garrett family and our extended family, thank you for those who have traveled here to be with us and for those who are joining us remotely. He truly appreciated all of the phone calls, the cards, the random visits throughout the years. 
especially as his siblings passed, your constant outreach made him continue to feel connected to them. We also appreciated how you checked in on him during this time. He truly, truly loved his family. He would want us to remain connected and to try to get together in good times, not just in times like this. But, we, but he was so thankful for how we would show up and to support one another in our times of grief. To the Slaughter family, Dad appreciated how you continue to treat him as a member of the family. The invites to family events, the holidays, the check-ins, the rides to church and other places were so appreciated. My mom even served as the complaint board when Kelly and I didn't do what he wanted us to do. He was so appreciative of your continued connection and support. To Reverend and First Lady Hall and the entire Calvary, Calvary, Calvary family, sorry. Thank you for allowing us to celebrate him here today. When dad decided to reconnect with his faith, he was so excited about finding a church home where he genuinely felt welcomed and a part of a true community. He would often say that being at Calvary reminded him of being at his childhood church. Many of Kelly and I's visits centered around attending service. Reverend Hall, she and I have been here enough. Please stop making us stand up as visitors. <laughs> he was always so inspired by a good word that he received and was so proud of the impact that Calvary had on the community. He also appreciated your visits and calls, Reverend Hall, especially during the times when he was in the hospital. Your visits always lifted his spirits and made his time more tolerable. To his amazing grandchildren, Stephen, Dominique, Gia, Russell, Michael, Jordan, Rhea, Jackson, and to his great-granddaughter, Diana. He was so incredibly proud of you all and all of your accomplishments. Thank you for helping him win the old folks bragging rights at the apartment complex where he stayed. Although his age and health prevented him from being the grandfather that he wanted to be, he was so proud of everything you were doing and will continue to do. Continue to strive for excellence and know that he is watching you. To his daughter-in-laws, daughter Rosalind and Diane, and his son-in-law, James. He was so appreciative of the impact on the lives of his children and the support and love you showed his grandchildren. He was in awe of how you put up with us because like I mentioned before, the Garrett genes are strong. He felt as though you made us better people and you do. Thank you for your love and your kindness. To my brother, Michael, thank you for the visits, the haircuts and getting him out of the house. His moods would always improve when you would visit and spend time with him. Thank you for giving him the same advice about his health and his well-being that Kelly and I did, but coming from you, it was the gospel. <laughs> he loved that the three of us were connected as siblings and he would want us to continue to nurture and grow that relationship. And finally, to my sister Kelly, please know that your sacrifices did not go unnoticed. He was the hardest on you because you spent the most time with him. Despite his orneriness, he appreciated all that you did. He, did not, he didn't just consider you a daughter, he consi considered you a friend and a confidant. He understood the amount of time you took from work and the impact that caring for him had on your personal and professional life. He appreciated it all. He even called you a genius towards the end, so you gotta take that as a win. <clears throat> Without you, he would not have made it this far, and I am so thankful. A few days after he passed, I said that I was prepared, but I wasn't ready. As, dad health, as dad's health declined and his frustration grew with his ailments, we knew the inevitable was upon us. We knew he did not have long, but we thought we had more time. We weren't ready for the suddenness of his departure or the manner in which it occurred. However, we take solace that he was both prepared and ready. He mentioned to so many how tired he was and that he was ready. Because he was ready, we will be able to move on. My dad and I shared a special bond. Both of us were the youngest amongst our siblings, so we understood the challenges associated with that. It is incredibly difficult being the smartest, funniest, and best looking amongst the group. <laughs> it's a real struggle, trust me. Um, as you can see, I'm blessed to have my dad's sense of humor. He was always good for a laugh, and he played way too much. My dad fascinated me my whole life. He was always so cool and made so many things cool. He was the only person that I knew that could drive a car with his knees while, ri while reading the paper driving down the Belt Parkway. He did really drive with his knees. Um, <laughs> he loved to drive and was the only person I knew that could tell you 10 different ways to get to a place without looking at a map. And yes, he did know how to read a map. We get our love of driving from him. We would much rather drive than fly. 
As kids, summers were spent taking road trips down south, which meant we passed 5,800 McDonald's only to be told we'd stop at the one as we got closer and we never did. <laughs> on weekends, he would take us to the movies and one of us needed to ensure that he didn't fall fully asleep because he snored really loud and we didn't want to get kicked out. He would also take us to the playground and take us to McDonald's as a treat because he did have McDonald's money. <clears throat> he was the best, field trip the best field trip chaperone ever because he brought the best lunches and snacks. I was the only kid in fourth grade with a mile high BLT. <laughs> he also would let me get stuff from the gift shop. Um, as I was preparing for today, I realized that I'm not sad about dad's passing. I'm sad about the separation. I'm sad about the things that I will miss. I will miss getting called princess when I call or visit. I will miss the annual phone call around the time of the New York City Marathon. He would always call me, and every year I would fall for it. He'd make small talk and then tell me that he needed me to take him to the city at 5 a.m. the next day. When I'd ask why I needed to take him into the city, he would say he needed to pick up his shorts and number for the race. In the last few years, as he was having mobility issues, he told me every time that every time he tried to register, they would reject him and told him that he won too many times and needed to give somebody else a chance. <laughs> I will miss our calls right before the start of the NFL season. I would call to talk to him about the Jets training camp, and he would tell me that they were messing with his contract and he was sitting out training camp until they gave him his money. Once the season started, he would say he was working at, on a free agent deal. Like I said, he played way too much. Although the way that they won their last two games, he might be giving them a little bit of a helping hand. While I would miss so much, I am so grateful for the time that I spent with him and the lessons I've learned. Keeping your shoes clean is a must. We spent weekends wiping down our shoes and washing our laces because he did not like dirty shoes. You are not fully dressed until your shoes are on. All your money must be neat and organized, and your bills must be going in the same direction and separated by denomination. It is better to back your car into a space than to pull into a space. It is much easy, easier to get out or get away. He helped teach us how to drive, my sister and I. We both live in New Jersey, and we figure we're the most dangerous people on the road because we learn New Jersey rules, but we were taught by New Yorkers. So that means that we speed and stop, si and stop signs and signals are suggestions. The only proper way to back into a parking space is to fully turn around and throw your arm over the passenger seat when doing so. And on sunny days, a good drive includes hanging your arm out the window to catch the breeze. I don't know what else to say other than to say I'm grateful the time that we had with Dad. I am thankful for the relationship we developed and for all the moments we shared. I am glad he is at peace now. He is no longer in pain and can move freely. He was the last one in and the last one out. The last of the Mohicans have gone home to rest. Grandma and Grandpa have their brood back together again, and what a party that must be. The conversation is loud, the tales are tall, and the food is amazing. Daddy, we will miss you, but we promise to take care of one another and to continue to make you proud. I hope that I have done you justice. We love you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Trustee Tara Brooks Smith. I'm one of the last to join the trustee boards, but I was fortunate enough to work with Trustee Thomas Garrett. Always a gentleman, wonderful man. Resolution for Trustee Thomas Garrett. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116, verse 15. To the family of Thomas Garrett, former member of Calvary Baptist Church Trustee Board, Pastor Hall, the Trustee Board, and the Calvary Baptist Church family extend our heartfelt sympathy and condolences in the passing of Trustee Thomas Garrett. Thomas Garrett served faithfully on the trustee board of Calvary Baptist Church for over 10 years. He loved being a trustee and was meticulous about his work. 
his service to the Lord and to his church. He served God and his church with the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control, all the fruits of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5.22. Trustee Garrett was a gentleman who was trustworthy and reliable, excuse me, he was a good friend to Trustee Davis, who considered him a big brother and from another mother. <laughs> he was a mentor to Trustee Don Adams and to Craig Sutherland and to William Bryant. Notice all the men. <laughs> he shared valuable life experiences with them and all the members of the trustee board who served with him agree that he was humble, mild-mannered, and a great storyteller with a good sense of humor. He was a sharp dresser all the time and was generous with his time and service. He cherished his family and spoke of his children and his grandchildren with pride and adoration he also cared for and was concerned about his trusty family, his church family, and the family of God. He looked up to and had a great respect for his older brother, Calvary's beloved uh, chairman of the deacon board, Deacon Kent Alonzo Garrett. He also told a lot of stories about how his older brother would rule with an iron fist. Oh, Psalm 25, verse 21 states, Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I put my trust in thee. We believe that the verse describes Trustee Garrett because his hope was in the Lord, and he lived a life of great integrity and honor. To the family, please know that you are in the thoughts and prayers of the past and present trustee board members. And we hope you will find comfort in knowing that Pastor Hall and the entire Calvary Baptist Church family are praying for you. Psalm 23, 4 states, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So we pray that God grant you his divine blessings, comfort, and strength during this time of bereavement and grief. We commend you to God who promised he will neither leave you nor forsake you. May your sorrow be eased knowing that he is resting in the master's hands. Therefore, be it resolved that a copy of this resolution will be filed in the church's records and a copy presented to the family. Submitted in love on October 20th, year of our Lord, 2023, the Board of Trustees of Calvary Baptist Church, Reverend Victor T. Hall, Pastor, Media Olivers, Acting Chairperson. Thank you. Good morning. Resolution for Trustee Thomas James Garrett. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. <clears throat> John chapter 14, verses one through three. Once again, heavenly bells tolled, and another one of Calvary's beloved trustees, Thomas James Garrett, was called home to live in the house of the Lord forever. Trustee Garrett joined Calvary Baptist Church on February 8, 1998, and was faithful in attendance until his health declined. He served on the trustee board from February of, 19, of 2008 
with dignity and pride. Though he is gone, he has left a lasting impression in the hearts of his Christian family. Now be it resolved that we thank God for the life and labors of trustee Thomas Garrett and for the service he rendered to God, Calvary Baptist Church, and community. Be it further resolved that we extend our deepest sympathy and condolences to his family and friends. May God grant you his divine blessings, comfort, and strength during your bereavement. We commend you to God, who promised that he will neither leave nor forsake you. May your sorrow be eased with the thought that he is resting in the master's arms. This resolution will be given to the family and a copy placed in the permanent records of Calvary Baptist Church. Submitted in love this 20th day of October, year of our Lord, 2023. Calvary Baptist Church, Reverend Victor T. Hall, Senior Pastor, Sylvia M. Pooh, Church Clerk. Good morning. Praise the Lord. My mentor's obituary, I will be reading. On Friday, October 6, 2023, trustee Thomas James Garrett was called home to be with the Lord, praise God, uh, preceded by both his parents and 14 siblings. He was the last surviving Garrett sibling of Reverend John E. and Maddie Garrett, TJ, who was affectionately known by many, was born on May 29, 1932, in Edgefield, South Carolina. He was the youngest of 15 children born to Reverend Johnny e. and Maddie Garrett. TJ grew up in the family, grew up on the family farm, and received his education in rural Sally, South Carolina. He was brought up in Carry, I'm sorry, he was brought up in Carry Hill Baptist Church where his father served as pastor. Uh, Thomas was academically uh, gifted student and attended North Carolina A&T State University at the age of 16. While at North Carolina A&T, TJ enlisted in the United States Air Force on November, 20, on November 7th, uh, 1950 and served with honor during the Korean War. He was stationed in Alaska and was, honor, uh, and was honorably discharged in 1954. He spent most of his adult life in New York until 2015 when he moved to Rahway, New Jersey to be closer to his children. His daughter Kelly was his primary caregiver. Uh, primary caregiver was the and the main reason why he was relocated to um, railway. Uh, despite living in New York for a long time, he never lost his southern charm. He was always a gentleman with a handkerchief at the ready, uh, taking pride in appearance and dress and getting everyone with a wave, greeting everyone with a wave and a smile. Uh, he would he would welcome all women and girls with, with a warm darling or sweetheart, while with men and boys would be greeted with a friendly fella and young man. After serving uh, in the United States military, he embarked on a career journey uh, that spanned several decades working in various roles across different industries. He began his career as a repairman where he developed his mechanical skills and gained valuable experience in troubleshooting and repairing complex machinery. Later, he transitioned to working as a long-haul truck driver traveling extensively across the country to deliver goods and materials to different destinations. He also held various roles in the company such as Wonder Bread and, Amer and American Airlines. Additionally, he worked, in the, he worked in the floor shining and restoration business with his brother, Deacon Kent Sr. and Elisha. In his later years, he decided to become an independent contractor livery driver, where he provided a range of transportation services for clients. 
He gained a reputation of being reliable, professional, courteous, and his services were highly sought after by those who needed a ride. TJ found solace in, in uh, solace and regained his faith, thank God, in 1998 when he became a member of the Calvary Baptist Church. He actively participated in various activities and services, immensing himself in the church community. His dedication and commitment were recognized over time, and he was appointed as a trustee in March of 2008. As a trustee, TJ played an important role in the church in church church's decisions and make decision making process. Uh, he ensured that the church resources were utilized effectively and efficiently in serving the congregation and the community. In 2017, upon relocating, TJ joined uh, <laughs> Agape. Agape. Thank you. I've been working on that word. Agape Family Worship Center in Rollway, New Jersey. TJ was a diehard New York sports fan, rooting for the Jets and the Mets while also supporting the Giants and the Yankees. He loved discussing and analyzing games with fellow fans and believed that sports brought people together. A victory for a New York team was always a case of celebration in his eyes. TJ was a father of four children. He had two sons, Lloyd Douglas Garrett, deceased, with Joanne Garrett, and Michael Garrett Sr. with Shirley Garrett, and two daughters, Kelly Garrett and Roberta Butler, with Betsy Garrett. In addition to his own children, TJ also cared for his longtime partner, June Taylor, deceased, June Taylor's three children, she is deceased, Russell, Valerie, and Ronnie. TJ was proud of his grand, was a, PJ was a proud grandfather of eight wonderful children. Stephen Stewart Williams, Dominic Garrett, Dr. Gia Garrett, Russell Mingos, Michael Garrett Jr., Jordan Garrett, Rhea Butler, and Jackson Butler. He also had a great granddaughter named Diana Stewart. He is survived by three children, two daughter-in-laws, Rosalind, Rosalind and Diane, one son-in-law, James, eight grandchildren, one great-grandchild, and sisters-in-laws, Mary Ellen Garrett, Mimi Garrett, and Rosalie Garrett, as well as a host of many nieces, nephews, and friends, lovingly submitted by the family. Amen. Should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why should my heart For heaven and home When Jesus is my portion A constant friend is he His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing 
sing because I'm happy and I sing because I am free his eyes ooh his eyes oh, on the sparrow and I know he watches Bless you, man. And Sister Kim. Thank you. Now, I've done everything I can do to get Kim at Calvary. I begged and I pleaded. But I say, you know what? Maybe a bribe would work. <laughs> Kim, do you know Genovia? No. Stand up, Genovia. Okay. Yeah, you know who that is. That's who writes all the checks and controls the money. <laughs> Genovia. Before the ser when the service is over, you go and make an offer to Kim. <laughs> I want the offer to be like the Godfather. <laughs> make her an offer she can't refuse. We're going to get you. We're going to get you. You know this. I feel it. I want not only to Alvin but to Multimedia. Thank you guys. God bless you. Uh, I know you uh, had a lot of rain and what have you to in a two hour commute this morning. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor inclement weather will keep these couriers from their appointed rounds. That's what it says on the main post office in Manhattan. Well, thank you guys. 
um, that you trekked through all of that to be here and serve today. We thank you. And thank you to Michael and Jordan, Trustee Media Oliver. Thank you so much, Trustee Don, Trustee Tara, Celeste, Laverne, Morgan, Glenn. Thank all of you. Um, Sister Roberta, what a beautiful tribute to your dad. Yeah. I, I couldn't have done that. But you did a great, great job with that. Thank you. God bless you. And amen. If you're worried about me asking you to stand with the visitors, that's easily remedied. A fat tithe in the offering plate. <laughs> put you in the membership <laughs> category. <laughs> Lorna Mason, if I'm not mistaken, is this the first time you've sat with the deaconesses since your consecration? Yes. You look beautiful. trustees, I know how much you guys loved Brother Gary, and he was a joy with whom to work, and thank you guys for coming up to support this family and to honor his memory. God bless you. This is probably not a funeral text at all. But the Lord placed this on my heart when I thought about Thomas Garrett. I don't want to be long because you know, it's already 15 to 12. What time we got to go, Paulie? What? You know, sometimes I think I don't speak English. I ask people questions and they answer stuff I didn't ask them. Let me try this again. What time do we need to be finished, Brother Paulie? Oh, you mean I got an hour and 15 minutes? <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, wow. This is, this is, you will readily, I don't even need to announce this text because you know it. And the Lord placed this on my heart. For God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. I want to talk about leaving a gift behind. Leaving a gift God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, leaving a gift behind. And what got me onto this line of thinking is that Trustee Garrett came to me one day He had a bag with a box in it. He said, Rev, this was given to me, but I have no use for this. And I know you love watches and you love pens. I think you will enjoy it. I 
I said, well, I, don't know. I, I wouldn't want you. I always had a rule that I'll give you anything, but I won't give you a gift that was given to me. Somebody cared enough to give you a gift. You, you don't give it away. I said, no, brother. Trustee Garrett, I can't take your... He said, no, Rev. Please take it. I, I don't want it. It would mean more to you than to me. So I said, okay, well, if you insist. I don't know who gave him this gift. But this is the gift. Yeah, who gave him this? I hope none of you daughters gave it to him. <laughs> I, think, I think it was a gift for maybe from a job where he had worked. And he said, Rev, I, I don't have a use for it. You, 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 you. You'll enjoy this. This is a gift for you. <laughs> he knew I love fountain pens and I love watches. He didn't have to worry about taking care of the watches. Trustee Adams takes care of the watches. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Adams. God bless you, man. But he gave me this pen. I got to my office. I opened the box. Mont Blanc. Oh, 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 really? As I looked a little closer, I noticed that there ensconced in the cap of the pen is a diamond. I said, oh, ho, ho, ho. Talk big dog. And, and so I don't used the pen that often because it was so special to me that he gave it. I couldn't use it as an everyday pen. I use it on special occasions. After all, it is a diamond-studded Mont Blanc. <laughs> I don't know what it costs, but I know what Mont Blanc. I have some Mont Blancs, but none of the ones I have have a diamond in the cap, so... <laughs> I have an idea of what this pen cost, but it wasn't the cost. It was just that he gave me something special, and I save it for special occasions, and when I use it, I think of him, or that he would give me this gift, this wonderful gift. And you know what? He gave every one of us a gift. Because when you love someone, you give. If he don't give, mama, he don't love you. It's not a question. It's not hard. No. When you love someone, love by nature, give. And he gave to each of you. He left a gift behind. A gift far more valuable than some material possession like a pen. But what I love about the pen is the pen conjures a memory of him and the man who he was and what he stood for and what he was about. He left me a pen, but he left you far more, because when you love, you give. He gave his time. The most precious commodity that you have is your time. Don't waste it with frivolities. Spend it. How does a child spell love? T-I-M-E. Time. If you love the child, you're going to spend time with that child. If you love your wife, you will spend time with your wife. You, you give. You leave a gift behind, a memory of the love that you gave. And that's, that's who this man was. He not only gave his time, he gave his care. Now, this might be a little um, politically incorrect, I don't know, 
But when I was at home getting ready to come, I had uh, uh, the video of the service going on, and I saw the picture. Y'all remember the young man he'd bring to church every Sunday? What was his name? Where is Russell? Where is his mama? Huh? You his aunt. Yeah, Gary was going with what, his, his mama or his grandmama? Grandmother. Your mother. Yeah. I always thought he cared for that little boy, and that boy touched his heart. And when she didn't come, he, there was Brother Gary with this little kid, this special young boy. And the little kid brought joy to everybody here at Calvary. And lo and behold, as I'm watching the pictures, I see a couple of pictures of him and that young man. You know, it's hard to get some men to take care of their own. But Brother Gary took care of that little kid like it was his own. And we love that little boy. He, he brought a smile to everybody. I pray to God that he is well wherever he is. Brother Gary shared the gift of Lil Russell with us. He left you so many wonderful, wonderful memories that love is giving to his daughters, to his grandchildren, to the Calvary family. Love is giving. Leave a gift behind. Let somebody remember the good that you did. Let somebody remember that somehow in your own inimitable special way you touched their hearts. Let somebody remember that you left a gift behind. Deacon Barnes, the old preachers used to say they prayed a prayer every day Three things they would pray. Lord, don't let my body outlive my mind. And with the scourge of dementia and Alzheimer's, we see what a, what a difficult thing that is when, when your body outlives your mind. Lord, don't let, Lord, oh God have mercy. Keep my mind. And you know when you start getting my age or you start getting old like Tara, she's a year older than me. <laughs> she keeps me young because, see, I'll never be her age. I'm younger than her. She's the old one. I'm the young one. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> Celeste, has this ever happened to you? You went to remember something and you couldn't remember. You're like, oh, God, am I getting dementia? You know, you get paranoid. Lord, don't, don't, don't let my body outlive my mind. The second thing the old preachers would pray is, Lord, don't let me outlive all of my mourners. And I've seen that too. I did a funeral in Brooklyn. There were four people in the chapel that day. The body of the deceased was one. I was the minister, and there were only two people. She had lived so long, she just outlived everybody. So there wasn't anybody there to stand up and say, Lord, don't let me outlive my mourners so somebody, Lord, can stand up on my day and say, a good man passed this way. A good woman touched our lives. And the third prayer was, Lord, don't let me die in shallow waters. Don't let me come to some tragic end. Keep me all the way. Well, a good man has passed this way. 
a man full of love, a man who was caring, a man who was giving. And he left a gift behind, and it's in your heart. Now take that gift and give it to someone else. Because when you love, you will give. And if, if there is no giving, then there is no love. Thank you, Brother Gary, for loving us. And thank you for taking the love that God gave us and sharing it with us. God bless you and God keep you.